Yes, yeah, Peter Bignall here from the Belgrove Distillery in Tasmania. Um, put this little video together for the virtual whiskey tasting show uh, while we're in this COVID lockdown. So it's a virtual show mainly with American uh, whiskies. Um, I make a rye whiskey. I'm in Australia and um, sort of there's not many ryes in Australia and that's why they're putting my rye in with, with the Amer American whiskey tasting. But um, I'm in the distillery. In fact, if any of, any of you have been following me on Facebook, um, I've got hashtag distillery couch. This is the uh, the couch we sit on just now and again in the distillery when we get time. But they've yeah, been pretty busy lately and haven't had much time to have a sit down. So um, this is in uh, one of the larger rooms in the distillery. Uh, some of you may have been here and, and seen around the place. It's built in an old stable. And um, you're down the other end, there's uh, where all the horse stalls were. And this used to be part of an open machinery shed, which is very gradually closing off and expanding. But the, um, here there's quite a, it's probably nearly 50 metres, 60 metres from one end of the distillery to the other now. Um, yeah, so this is the little bar where we do our taste, tastings here that uh, some of you may recognise. That um, there, There's a lot of the uh, Belgrove bottles there. And particularly what we're talking about today, uh, the, these two here, the, there's the, the, um, they're both dry whiskies. One is at 45%. That's a batting of quite a few different barrels and then diluted to where, we, where it tastes really nice at 45. And the other one is uh, been aged in a heartwood cask. It is, it is cask strength. You can see that 62.7%, which is natural cask strength. And just a little label on the back here. So this was aged in an ex-heartwood cask. So yeah, Tim Duckett from Hartwood, um, I made him some rye a few years back and, and made him a few other bits and pieces since then for him to age. But part of the deal was that um, yeah, he supplied me with his old barrels once he'd emptied them. So we've got this um, ex-Hartwood cask, any port in the storm is what he called it. Um, but I've done, they've yeah, got quite a few of them out, but um, yeah, the, the other one, the, um, yeah, he did, did have another one out, out, out earlier. So. Um, just in, in in this part of the distillery, I've got a, you got a bit of a bit of my whiskey collection, which is there on the shelf there. That's just my um, education purposes, just for my taste buds. Up there, there's a, um, a few of the uh, cases that uh, or the you know, tubes that the bottles came out of. Um, just have a little bit of a wander around the distillery here. So we've got. Um, in this, this room here, we've got some uh, barrel storage and, and basically a bit of junk storage in here as well. A couple of interesting ones since we're talking about American. We've got a, um, there's a Jack Daniels barrel there. And uh, there's a Maker's Mark one there that, that's, that's been recoupered. This, this Maker's Mark one's a beauty. It's um, I'm actually just about to send a sample that off to Jim Murray to get judged to see what he thinks of that. Um, yeah, we've got barrels from all over the place. The South Australian cooperage, that'd be an export barrel. Um, occasionally, I'll do the very small little barrels. That's one's got, um, oh, you may have heard of a Bogan Burnout. There's some Bogan Burnout in that little 20 litre. But there's a couple of hundred litres of that. Um, there's a, there's another, another um, American bourbon barrel that's been um, here at Cooper. But, um, yeah, heart, heartwood is. Um, it will. We'll just go down and show you where some of the heartwood ones are. There's um, another little store here. This is the old. Um, some of you been here ages ago might remember this as a tasting room. But um, it's now now the barrel part of the barrel store. But there's a there's a heartwood barrel there. That um, I can't. I don't know what that is when that becomes of age. We'll find out what that was called. And uh, that'll be another hardwood one. That's a big 300 litre barrel. Um, but what I, what I do here is um, the whole fa farm, um, well, it's a, the whole distillery is totally uh, dirt to drink, paddock to bottle. You know, we sow the grain in the paddock and then um, harvest the grain, do our own malting, mashing, fermenting, uh, built the stills myself, and, um, and then, then we um, barrel age it here. Um, I even recoup the barrels myself. I've got a, um, a photo back up here of uh, burning burning the barrels out. So that's that's great fun to burn the barrels out. We get some beautiful um, yeah, smells coming out of them. But, um, there's a uh, there's a photo there stuck on the fridge of yeah, a couple, couple of barrels there. I'm burning out. If I can get rid of that flare on there. 
Yeah, yeah, a bit, bit of good fun burning those barrels out. So, yeah, I've got a few more to do at the moment. But um, a couple of stills. I've got a, a there's a new still here that um, when you see there, I'm in the process of building. That um, I had a quite a big order to go to China, and um, so I, I've yeah started to build a new still, and uh, the China. Um, the deal fell through, so that's been sitting there for the last several months. Haven't had time to touch it, so to finish it off. And um, I did send it up to a uh, got got a commercial company to do the rolling of those nice curves on it. But um, yeah, I'm do, doing all the welding on it and get quite a lot more welding and building condenser for it yet. But when 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 the demand increases again, but um, also there's another another still there that I that I built myself. It's a strange looking one. That's actually a continuous stripping steel, but I haven't used that for rye yet. Uh, but that runs on um, that, that just runs on old fish and chip oil, and very very efficient little steel that is. But um, I'll take you down and show you that the main steel I use, which is a 700 litre, just a copper pot one. Uh, today we're we're, um, we're actually distilling some wine in it that was the, the grapes were contaminated with smoke in the big bushfires in here so that, um, oh, nearly 18 months ago now in, in southern Tasmania. So there's the still, so a lot of you would have been here and probably recognised that. But we've got yeah, spirit running out of there now. That, that's, um, that's a spirit from the uh, smoke-tainted grapes. That would, as it is there now, to be a grapper, but uh, we're going to barrel age that. There's a, a burner. That uh, still. And I don't know if you heard that with the noise. There's still there, but yeah, there's a flame there that's um, just it's cooking oil that's burning. But, um, outside, I hope we don't lose our link with the Wi-Fi. But we've got um, there's the old the old tumble dryer here that a lot of you probably recognise where, where I do my malting. Um, anyway, we might have did a little bit there if we lost the signal. But the the rye, the what, what we do with the rye whiskey, or my, my attitude to making whiskey is it's all about flavour. It's not about alcohol. We make as as much uh, flavour as we can, not as much alcohol as we can. So to, I treat the uh, alcohol as a byproduct. It has to be there to yeah, to carry the flavours. But um, but the main thing we do is flavour every part of the process, right from yeah you know, just the grain itself, the malting, everything. All the process is all about maximising the good flavours and and lots and lots of flavours. I'm, I'm certainly not trying to make vodka; it's something totally opposite end of the spectrum. But um, these bottles that that I showed you will they're being divided up. Here we go again with them. <laughs> And there's the, any port in a storm. So they've been divided up into little bottles for you to sample. And um, I hope you enjoy it. Uh, yeah, rye whiskey is quite different from malt whiskey. And my rye whiskey, again, is quite different from American ryes. Uh, just the way I make it, I make it using only 100% rye, not, nothing else in there. Whereas a lot of the American ones would have barley and corn in there as well. But this is just 100% rye, quite spicy and peppery. But anyway, I'll let you decide when you have a little tasting of what, what you think of it. But uh, it is it is very, very different. But yeah, I have won quite a few awards with it. So we've got um, the Jim Murray's Whiskey Bible. There's, um, where can we get that? Yeah, Southern Hemisphere Whiskey of the Year, 2019. And I've got uh, Icon to Whiskey, Brand Innovator, Distillery Manager, Craft Producer of the Year for two years in a row. Uh, another little one up there, Wizards of Whiskey. That's a UK-based competition. That um, yeah, won an award in that as, as well. But um, yeah, I think that'll do. When we edit a bit of that, we'll um, have what you want. I think that's it, Oliver. Unless you want to me do something else. I think the the only other, I guess, question that comes to mind is why do you do a hundred percent rise? Is there something better that comes out of the yield, or? Yep. Okay. Um, I'll just start back over here with where these are. Yep. So the 100% rye. Look, the, the 
the main reason I do 100% rye is, is that's what I grow here on the farm. I've been growing rye for many, many years, probably since I was a teenager. And uh, when I wanted to ma start making whiskey, well, the only reason was I started making whiskey was I had a surplus of rye grain one year and I couldn't sell it. So th and then I thought, well, there's not a very many 100% ryes about, so I will just make it out 100% rye. I could do my own malting, means I didn't have to buy anything in except yeast. Um, that, that, that's, all, that's all I need to buy in. The whole distillery runs on, I mentioned before, old cooking oil, though very little cost. But yeah, 100% rye, it is because basically I, I, I don't like being a follower. I like to do something different from, from other people. So not many people were doing 100% rye. Well, in fact, nobody in Australia was doing rye when I started. And then 100% um, then rye, I thought, well, that's you know, it's, it's just a slightly harder thing to do. I love a challenge. And so I think, well, it's the flavour I want. The more rye you got in there, the more flavour you got because rye's got so much more flavour than, than, than barley or corn.